hey guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be a what i eat in a day but it's going to be a little bit different because i'm going to be talking more about my pcos journey ever since i mentioned on my channel that i was diagnosed with pcos i have had hundreds of girls reach out to me asking for a video about it because it is so so common and if you don't have pcos and you just want to live a healthy lifestyle then hopefully this video gives you some good like healthy recipes and some inspo as well so thank you so much to simple truth by kroger for sponsoring today's video they are a line of affordable healthy organic foods and they have some really really good options that you can add into your daily life perfect for those new year's resolutions for 2021 they have so many different options for several different diets like keto gluten-free vegan organic and they're also really affordable and it's actually really convenient because you can pick it up curbside or you can have them deliver it straight to your door so we are actually going to go pick up our grocery order so i'm going to take you guys along just pulled up to kroger we parked in the pick up spot one omar is checking us in on his phone and they're gonna bring out our groceries so we're like five minutes late so hopefully it's not yeah hopefully they didn't buy all our groceries <laughs> <laughs> so nice they're even putting it in our trunk for us you got enough for him back there i think yeah i can i can manage all right thank you thank you we're back from kroger and i went ahead and unpacked everything from the car and i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little grocery haul okay i'm gonna share with y'all everything that i got from kroger and i'll share with you guys kind of what i'm planning on making with all of this stuff um i got so much stuff from the simple truth line at kroger and this is kind of like their healthy organic line and i was really really impressed because i do try to eat organic as much as possible when i can and a lot of times it can get really expensive well this line is very affordable and they have have so many options they have so many like natural gluten-free plant-based keto options so many good things to choose from that are affordable and they are also um, free of like 101 artificial additives and preservatives so it's a really a nice clean brand so I'm gonna go ahead and start with this side so I got some almond flour this I am planning on using to make some healthy like air fried chicken nuggets so I thought I would give you guys kind of like a healthy meal option that doesn't like feel so healthy so we're gonna try that then i got some roasted almonds for snacks i wanted to try out their dairy-free milk so i always like to do an almond milk so i got vanilla almond milk but i also wanted to try out their oat milk too so we will try that out in smoothies and things like that i got some tea so you guys know i am a teaaholic so i got some peppermint fennel and ginger tea because i always like to kind of have a tea after i eat my meals just to kind of help with digestion and then this is another mint blend we were running out of olive oil so i got some organic olive oil then i went ahead and picked up an organic ketchup and this is actually really good because a lot of ketchups contain sugar or most of them do and you never really know what kind of sugar they're using but this one contains organic sugar which is really really important to me if i'm gonna have any sugar i want to make sure it's organic then i have some apples i'm gonna just use that as snacks i'll do that with with some almond butter. I got some smooth, creamy almond butter. And then this is actually kind of like a naughty treat, but I thought that if there was ever a time that I really wanted a little treat for myself, I could do some non-dairy um, ice cream. And I really try not to do this very often. I try to make sure that all the foods that I eat are really un unprocessed, but this is a good option if I'm like having one of those like really major cravings. Then I have a bunch of vegetables. Um, I wanted to get some grape tomatoes for salads, also Kalamata olives for salads, cucumber, lemon. We have some sweet potato. I'm gonna do sweet potato fries, that's right. So I wanna do the chicken nuggets and the sweet potato fries in the air fryer. Um, I have bananas, red onion for the salad, and then I have some avocados because I like to put that in smoothies or I like to put it on toast. And then I have some seltzer water. Seltzer water is basically just sparkling water. And they had um, their own brand of Simple Truth, so I wanted to try it. I got the lemon-lime flavor. Then I got some frozen berries for smoothies. I got strawberries and blueberries. I have some organic chicken breasts to make um, the chicken nuggets. And then I got some popcorn, which would be a really good, healthy snack. 
So I'm excited to do my what I eat in a day for you guys. I'm gonna start that tomorrow so I can start fresh with breakfast. So we will move on to the what I eat in a day portion. It's the next day. I finally have a little moment to sit with you guys and chat a little bit more about PCOS. I wanted to talk to you guys about my PCOS journey because ever since I shared that I had PCOS on my channel, I have had hundreds of girls reach out to me asking me to do this video, sharing how I manage my symptoms. So I wanted to do this, but if you guys are do not care about PCOS, I will leave the timestamp down below where you can click to the what I eat in a day because I have some really good healthy and yummy recipes that will be good for anyone. But I wanted to share this journey because I know it will help so many girls. PCOS is so common and I wish that this video was out whenever I first found out that I had it when I was 17 years old. So firstly, what is PCOS? PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is a hormonal imbalance that's caused by elevated male hormones and the symptoms can be irregular periods, um, acne, weight gain, facial hair, and male pattern baldness to name a few. Whenever I got diagnosed at 17, I went to the doctor because I did not have a period for a year and I was also gaining weight. I was about 10 pounds heavier than I am right now, so I wasn't like overweight. I was just, I just knew that there was something wrong. So um, I also want to disclaim that I am not a doctor, so anything, like any information I'm giving you in this video should not replace the advice from your doctor. I'm just giving you guys my personal experience and things that helped me. Another characteristic of PCOS is also little cysts that line the ovaries, which is from the egg not releasing properly during ovulation. Um, and that is actually not a sign in every single person that has PCOS, but that is why they call it polycystic ovarian syndrome. So PCOS is actually one of the like most common reasons for infertility. And that is one of the reasons why I was so upset and just so anxious and just devastated when I found out that I had PCOS. Even at 17, I was already thinking like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be so hard for me to get pregnant and I was already so worried about it and I wasn't even like anywhere near having a baby. So if you guys are feeling that way, I totally understand your feelings and I hope that this video is helpful in any way um, and just know that there is hope in managing your symptoms. And also as a labor and delivery nurse, I saw tons of women diagnosed with PCOS who were able to have healthy babies so I hope that that also gives you some hope as well. So what causes PCOS? The main root of the problem is insulin resistance. The easiest way I can describe insulin resistance is your cells do not respond well to insulin. So your pancreas has to continue pumping out more and more insulin for your body to respond to it. So you have all this free floating insulin in your body, which causes your male hormones to elevate. So if you can get your insulin resistance under control, then you can also manage your PCOS symptoms. You can manage insulin resistance through exercise and diet, and there's also some medications that you can talk to your doctor about. I personally took metformin, which is a diabetic medication, for about a year whenever I first found out that I had PCOS, and it did allow me to get my period back, but now I no longer take any medications, and I just manage it with my diet and lifestyle. But like I said before, talk to your doctor about what is right for you. So with insulin resistance, you kind of have to treat yourself like you are a diabetic, even even if you're not because insulin resistance can also lead to elevated blood sugar levels so you kind of have to modify your diet to fit more of a diabetic low carb high protein diet in order to best um, manage your PCOS symptoms so I do want to also say that in the beginning of my PCOS journey I was very very strict with my diet because I was in the process of healing my body um, but now here and there I am a little bit more relaxed so if you guys see me eating like certain things just know that um, I did stick to this specific diet very very strictly when I first started and it was definitely not easy whatsoever but it was so so worth it so what I did is I cut out all dairy and gluten and this was just a personal preference only because um, they are more higher inflammatory foods and I just wanted to make sure I was eliminating those out of my diet while I was trying to heal my body. I also made sure that I was eating only whole foods. So I cut out all refined sugars, all refined anything. It was basically just like whole 
fruits, vegetables, grains, and meats. Um, so that was kind of the diet that I followed, especially in the very beginning. I cut out all processed foods, all sodas, all juices, um, anything with high sugar content, even high sugar fruits, honestly, I cut those out because on a PCOS diet, you really wanna make sure that you're keeping your carb intake to a minimum and balancing it with really good um, healthy fats and proteins. I also made sure that I was doing cardio and weightlifting at the time. I honestly have gotten so bad now, I need to get back on a better track of working out, but at the time when I was healing my body, I was making sure to get in lots of physical activity every single day. So this was definitely like a regimen of diet and exercise over the course of several years in the beginning of my journey that really helped keep my body like in check and I was able to have regular periods on my own again even after stopping the metformin which was huge for me because I had not had a regular period in over a year um, without the medication so it was so so exciting for me that this was really really helpful believe me I know that a diagnosis of PCOS can be extremely devastating especially when you're scared of infertility and when you google it it says that there's no cure but I promise you there are ways to manage it and there are so many different ways to help with your fertility nowadays so I just hope that this video gives you guys hope and um, I just want you guys to know that it is definitely possible to manage your symptoms I'm gonna go ahead and get into the what I eat in a day so it gives you a better idea of the things that I eat for PCOS and I hope that you guys find this helpful good morning everyone I have everything laid out to make my smoothie this morning for breakfast and I also went ahead and boiled some uh, eggs to go on the side so you want to be very careful with smoothies when you have PCOS because you don't want them to be over sugary and just a whole bunch of sugar in the morning um, I always try to balance out my sugars with healthy fats and protein especially when you have PCOS it's very very important to get healthy fats and protein at every meal so um, I'm gonna show you guys how I do that today so for the smoothie I'm gonna add one banana so you definitely want to make sure it's frozen banana but I just didn't have frozen banana today but the frozen banana makes it super like creamy and a much better texture for the smoothie um, then I'm gonna add berries so with the fruits that you put in your smoothies for PCOS you tr you want to try to make sure they're not super sugary fruits like pineapples like um, I guess pineapples would probably be like the sweetest fruits I would try to avoid so I'm gonna put in some berries so I have some strawberries I'm just gonna put in like a little handful of strawberries and blueberries berries are amazing for PCOS because they contain so many nutrients and vitamins and antioxidants um, without so so much sugar so for healthy fats and protein to add to the smoothie, I'm going to add some flax seeds. So I'm going to add just about a tablespoon of flax seed powder. And I'm going to go ahead and add about a tablespoon of almond butter as well. Another thing I love adding to my smoothies is a half of an avocado. It gives a really nice creamy texture to the smoothie. You really can't even taste it since it's such a mild flavor um, and it just adds lots of healthy fats and it's amazing for you. Then I have about two handfuls of spinach and you, it, this looks like a lot, but honestly you guys, you cannot even taste it. It just blends well with the rest of the flavors in the smoothie and it adds lots of greens. Um, to start your day. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a non-dairy milk. This is oat milk. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and blend this up and I'll be right back. Okay, do not be fooled by the color of this smoothie. I know it's not the prettiest, but it actually tastes really, really good. You have the sweetness from the berries and the banana and the creaminess from the avocado and it balances out with the nut butter and the flax seed. So, so delicious. I went ahead and peeled my boiled eggs and I usually do about three it's really up to you I just like to have some kind of protein on the side and I like to do salt and pepper on my eggs but that is a typical breakfast that I would do another idea for a breakfast for PCOS would be like an omelet with lots of veggies some avocado on the side with like a side of berries you just want to make sure that you're 
balancing your protein, healthy fats, and carbs um, in the same meal. So I am about to dig in and I will see you guys at lunch. It's a few hours later and I'm gonna make some lunch now. Um, I'm gonna be making a big hearty salad with some salmon and I'm so sorry if you guys have seen me make salads on my channel so many times. It's really because they are one of the best lunches that you can have when you are trying to eat healthy and you want something that's gonna be super nutritious for you. And I know that I've gotten this comment before, like, are you really just gonna eat only a salad for lunch, that's it? You guys, you have to beef it up with lots of protein and healthy fats in order for you to feel full uh, and for it to really satisfy you. So I am beefing it up with some um, chickpeas. I also have some nuts, some almonds I'm gonna be crushing up to put on top. And I also have my salmon, which is lots of healthy fats. I actually did this in the air fryer. It looks perfect, I'm so excited. Okay, so I have probably two servings of greens in here because I'm making it for Omar and I, so I have my greens. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add some cucumber, red onion. I always kinda like to make my salad a little bit of like a Mediterranean inspired salad. So I always like to do like the cucumbers, tomatoes, um, Kalamata olives. These are washed, by the way. Adding some cherry tomatoes. And then let me add my chickpeas. I honestly took this salad with me wherever I went because I was very, very diligent about my diet and I would literally take this salad with me to high school. I literally took it with me to lunch when I was in nursing school or even like while I was at clinicals. I would never like stray away from my diet. I always just took my healthy food with me wherever I went and it always was a lot more effort to do that obviously, but it was so worth it in the long run because I was able to stick to my goals and um, I really feel like I got so much benefit off of really trying to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So I'm going to go ahead and crush up these almonds. If you're bringing a salad with you to work or to school, you can always put your vegetables um, in one container and your dressing on the side. That way your leaves um, and all your vegetables don't get soggy. Another thing I like to add to my salads for protein is quinoa. It's so filling in salads. I also really like to add avocado to my salads as well. It adds lots of healthy fats and keeps you really full throughout the day. I'm gonna add my Kalamata olives. And I've been really, really liking the Simple Truth brand from Kroger, you guys. I'm like, seriously, I've been so impressed with everything that I've tried so far. I just had one of their seltzer waters, which I'm also gonna have another one with my lunch. <laughs> and it was really, really good. So here I have everything in my bowl, all my vegetables. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put my dressing. And I always like to make my own dressing because a lot of times store-bought dressings can have extra sugars and just ingredients that you don't necessarily want. So I'm just doing some extra virgin olive oil. And this also adds lots of healthy fats as well. And then I'm just gonna do some lemon juice. I always like to keep it super simple. So I'll do an olive oil and lemon or olive oil and balsamic vinegar or something like that. And it just keeps everything really clean. I don't think I got any seeds in that at all. <laughs> that was really impressive. Okay, now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix everything together with some tongs. I've also seen this little tool, um, it's called a salad chopper or something where you can just like place it in your bowl and chop up all your vegetables if you like all of your vegetables chopped up really good in your salads. I don't know, I haven't invested in that yet, but that seems like it would make your salads taste really good. And whenever I bring my salads with me to school or work, I always would put it in my container, put the dressing and like shake it up. So that's a really good tip if you're not home and can't like mix it like this with tongs or like a fork or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate this with my salmon. Okay, so that is a typical lunch that I would do for PCOS. So delicious and so filling with the salmon, the chickpeas, the almonds, um, just, so delicious it smells so good i also sometimes like to add like fresh basil or mint to my salads it makes it so delicious 
I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy my salmon. And I'm also drinking one of these seltzer waters from Simple Truth. They are so good, like I said. I got the lemon lime flavor and it is delicious, so. I'm gonna go ahead and start on dinner. I wanted to make something to show you guys that you can still have healthy alternatives to things that don't seem so healthy. So I'm gonna be making chicken strips and french fries in the air fryer and I'm gonna do sweet potato fries and I'm going to bread the chicken with almond flour and spices so you still get those really um, good healthy fats along with your protein along with your complex carbs and I'm also going to add um, a little bit of salad that we had earlier that's left over just as a little side salad to add in some greens so it's a really like healthy balanced meal perfect for PCOS um, and you still get all the nutrients and all the good flavor and you don't feel like you're missing out so I went ahead and cut the simple truth organic chicken breast into smaller pieces so we can have little strips I went ahead and cut Oh, actually, Omar did this for me. Yes, I did it. <laughs> because I told him <laughs> I hate chopping sweet potatoes. <laughs> so he cut them into fry shapes. Then I have my spices here. I have salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, lemon pepper, and paprika. And I also have some baking soda. And I'll put measurements for these all down below. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my almond flour. And I'm going to do, since I have two pounds of chicken, I'm going to do two cups of almond flour for this. So I whisk four eggs in a bowl and first you dip the chicken in the eggs, then you dip the chicken and coat it evenly in the almond flour and spices, and then we place it in the air fryer. So we kind of did a little assembly line doing this process over and over until all the chicken was coated. You don't have to use a lot of oil in the air fryer, so I added a little bit of olive oil to the sweet potatoes and salt and pepper and garlic powder, and I did those in the air fryer as well. I just finished and Omar and I just taste tested it. This was actually the first time I'd made this recipe. It is so delicious. It does not feel like super healthy. It feels like you're just eating chicken strips and french fries, but it is super healthy in the air fryer with almond flour and just a little bit of olive oil. So, so yummy. I have my side salad from leftover from earlier at lunch. I have some of the Simple Truth um, organic ketchup on the side. So Omar and I are going to dig in. So, so yummy. Highly recommend you guys try this recipe. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the night with something sweet, but like I said, I always like to balance out my carbs with healthy fats. So I have a gala apple, and this is a tablespoon or maybe two <laughs> of um, almond butter. And then I have the mint blend tea from Simple Truth organic and that is my little dessert i hope that this video was helpful to any of you guys who have pcos or just anyone wanting to live a healthy lifestyle thanks again to simple truth by kroger for sponsoring today's video i really do recommend their line of healthy and affordable options that you can literally get delivered straight to your door or you can pick them up curbside i hope that you guys enjoyed this video let me know what you guys want to see next and i will see y'all in my next one bye